uh, now we are joining online, the only online connection with Europe will be with Professor Nicolas Standard, who will be talking about verbis shaped by the Chinese. Professor Dr. Nicolas Standard is the director of Sinological Institute at the Catholic University of Leuven. Zunting the Da Shu Sinsung, Zunting the Oman Li Shu Shu Shu, Yellow Beijing Zhongxin, Hayo Beijing Zhongguo Shu Zhongxin the Tong Shu, Chin I the Shu German, Da Dia Hao. So Sien Wo Twe Nimen Yao Ching Wo Tsan Yu Che Tse Hui Yi, Biao Shu Zhen Zhen the Xi Yi. 呃，我很高兴，呃呃，有那么多的呃中国学者、呃学生们或者朋友们呃参与这次会议。我也希望呃这次南华人庆祝活动能能够加强中欧的之间的友好的关系和文化理解。呃，我将以英语呃进行演示。呃，但我的 PPT 也会嗯呃呃添加呃添加呃中文的翻译。So the topic of my talk is um uh verbs shaped by the Chinese, uh, 被中国人塑造的南华人。So what I would like to do is to uh make a kind of interconnected history of a Jesuit in Qing Chao uh uh. China uh, during the Qing Chao, and I adopted also this um, term of interconnected history um, that is also used by the um, uh, Shanghai Institute at Fudan uh, University, the Institute for Advanced Humanistic Studies, where they also approach Chinese history from a history interconnected history uh, point of view. Let me first. Um, um, tell a little story, uh, uh, and the story goes about an invention that we made in the history of uh, uh, photography about uh, 10 years ago. We invented a selfie, and by creating a selfie, and very often we take selfies, we created the illusion that we no longer need the other to take a picture of ourselves, uh, as you no, in this long history of phot photography, it is always someone else who was taking a picture of us. And it was always a kind of interaction between the one who is taking the picture and between ourselves. And we needed the other to take a picture of ourselves. So there was a kind of in-betweenness also, eh, because person says, you know, you have to smile or you have to move your body and so, and in the end, there were several pictures and we looked at the picture and then we recognized ourselves and this said something about our identity. And in fact, this interaction between the other and the self eh, is also the basis of a lot of philosophy that simply says that the self is shaped by the other and emerges from the encounter with the other, just like in traditional photography. And one becomes this oneself through the others. And this is the approach that I also would like to take with um, the beast. So the beast is not only always himself, it is as if we only talk about the beast without the interaction with the others. And as we know, the beast, as was already explained in the other lectures, uh, interacted with Chinese and with Manchu persons. And there was also uh, an inter, uh, that means an in-between uh, the two uh, agents that were involved. And every interaction leads to a story eh? that also happens today. Eh? When you have your meeting today, at the end of the day, you will tell to other people, or you will maybe write a mail or whatever about what happened. So there was a story about it, and this is reflected in cultural creations. Eh? That can be an oral text, but can be a written text, images, artifacts, buildings, and so on and so on. 
And what we do as historians, in fact, we only have access to this text, images, artifacts, buildings, and so on. And in one way or another, we try to find or to catch the original interaction between, uh, in this case, Fabist and the Chinese uh, scholars or um, officials with whom he was uh, working together. And uh, that's the interaction that also exists with a uh, historian. And that's what I would like to do. I will not only talk about Verbist, I will show how Verbist became who he became by the interaction with his Ch Chinese and these Manchu. And so here, for instance, you have Verbist and the world map, eh? but he had also all kind of astronomical instruments, you have the, the little automobile, you have cannon, you have text, and you can say that all these creations are the product of this interaction. Now, I will uh, only focus on some people of whom we have some documentation, eh, because he interacted with quite a number of commoners and we have but we have little documentation about that and here is a very simple simplified structure of the people about whom i will be talking about the emperor and then you have the imperial household department which is basically the court but then you have the government the grand secretariat with the different six uh, ministries. One of them is the Ministry of Rights, under which there is the Imperial Astronomical Bureau. So let me start with the emperor. So as already was pointed out, this was a quite, uh, uh, um, uh, quite um, uh, exceptional or uh, interesting um, uh, relationship eh? because, um, yeah, uh, 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 the emperor was quite young and Verbist became uh, the teacher or tutor, one of the tutors of the emperor. And he was uh, um, about 20 years older. Uh, and it is exceptional because in all the other cases later where there were Jesuits or missionaries uh, involved with teaching or instructing or relationship with emperors, the emperor was always older than uh, the missionary in case. So uh, here we see already some of the adaptations eh, because Forbist was made to learn Manchu. Eh? We should not forget that certainly also after Forbist, eh, most of the conversations between the emperor and the missionaries was in Manchu and not in Chinese. Eh? Um, so, uh, and he also translated some of these texts and this concerned the mathematics and astronomy. Uh, 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 this was uh, happened in, um, uh, uh, in the early um, uh, 1970s uh, when the, um, uh, the emperor asked for Bist for a continuous period of about five months uh, to uh, come to the court and introduce him in mathematics and in um, uh, and in astronomy. And why is that also uh, exceptional? Because the emperor had the classes in the classics, the Chinese classics, but we have no record of an emperor before the Kangxi emperor who was um, uh, systematically introduced in, for instance, mathematics or astronomy and these kind of sciences. Moreover, the relationship lacked some formality, which was typical eh, for the tutors of the Southern study where, uh, where the classics were taught. Eh? And in the Chinese sources, it's even said that um, Ren, that uh, Verbist did not have to perform the koto when he was um, uh, teaching. The topics that were discussed also concerned ballistics, hydraulics, perspective, uh, as was already pointed out in the Astronomia Europea. Now, what is important for me here uh, is that these are all clear examples where the initiative did not come from Verbist. Verbist did not go to China to introduce mathematics to the emperor. 
it started from the interest and the attitude of the emperor himself. So it is the other who made from this possible to uh, introduce these sciences to the emperor. And it was not only the sciences, there were all kinds of other topics that were discussed. For instance, eh, most probably, they also discussed the funeral rites. We know that Forbist produced a book on the Catholic funeral rites, uh, and this was produced in uh, 1682. And the year before was the funeral eh, of the two empresses you see on your right. Eh? You, you can see that they died much earlier, but they were only entombed in 1681. We do not know to what extent Fabist and the emperor uh, discussed these matters, but um, what we know is that the emperor read the text and annotated the text. And so everything that you see here in red are the annotations by the um, uh, Kangxi emperor. And so he makes some points and then he uh, adds some comments. He reads, uh, 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 yoli, yoli. Uh, 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 yeah, I cannot see it on my my own screen, but it basically says, yes, it makes sense, it makes sense, but it may offend some people. And so you have the personal um, expressions or comments by the Kangxi Emperor on, for instance, the rituals for funeral, which were very important also for the Kangxi Emperor later on. Um, I have to see because it is not moving. Uh, yep, okay. So this was the relationship with the emperor. I briefly go to the imperial household department and the grand secretariat. So the how to household department is the inner court and the secretariat is the external court, you can say, uh, with, the, um, with the officials. And uh, we have some records in or in the a text by um, the letters by Verbist or in the sources by Chinese scholars eh, of visits to uh, Nanhua Ren. So what you can see here, that is that there is a wide variety of people eh, who um, uh, contacted him because he had, Verbist had a position in the civil ser service and that f uh, enabled him to um, uh, uh, to operate as a member of the political elite. But here again, I make the step uh, by saying it is the others who contacted him. Uh, and these are examples of how his position and his competence was recognized by the others. Uh, I will not enter into all the details, uh, but this has been described, as you can see in many of my slides, I make the reference of scholars who have discussed these uh, topics. I move immediately to the Imperial uh, Astronomical uh, Bureau, uh, which fell under the a ministry of uh, rights. What is the situation there? The traditional uh, structure was having a director and then you had a vice director of left who was usually Manchu and a life director of right who was usually a Chinese. And then you have three sections, the calendar section, astronomical section and the water clock section. And I only give details here for the calendar section. There is a director then of the five offices. There are five offices, spring, summer, and so on. And then there are some erudites and also some students. Uh, there were probably uh, more than 100, maybe 180 students or something like that. So what was the position of Verbist actually? Uh, uh, and the beginning, the origin is a bit confusing, but he, was appointed and they made a special position for him. He did not really become director, just like Shal, but he became the administrator of the calendar. And so he was basically in charge of the calendar uh, section. Um, now, what is interesting here is to look at what happens in the network that was present in the calendar section. 
Here you have an overview with all the positions. And again, based on the research that has been done by Chinese scholars. And what is in red is uh, for beast. And then you have in purple, you have Liu uh, Yunde. And then in uh, green, you have uh, Sun Youben. And these are uh, scholars uh, that uh, yeah, require our attention. Here you have also uh, a Bao Yingqi. Uh, what I want to show is that there was a whole network of scholars that were also Christians. And I will briefly explain how there was a collaboration at the same time with Forbist, but it goes back in time and it continued 20 or 30 years later. And so for instance, one of the names I just mentioned was Liu Yinde. And you can see he also has a Western name, Blaise Verbist. He was a student of Charles. He published several works. He was promoted to, to vice director of the right uh, in 72. 72 is the time when uh, one and two, when uh, Verbist really took office uh, in this department. Uh, but later on, uh, he was baptized and he entered into the Society of Jesus and he was also ordained priest in 1688 by Luo Wenzhou, who was a Chinese uh, bishop uh, and later became a pastor in several places. I come back on him a bit later. Then you have the Sun family, uh, which was a family also of Christians. And you have, for instance, also the Pao family. And over the generations, these, they were all working in the office of the calendar office in different functions. Sometimes they were um, erudites, sometimes they were one of the directors, sometimes they were a student, and that continued over the time. So you have the lineage, the whole network of people surrounding this uh, position. Now, we can see that there was a real collaboration between them. Uh, uh, as you know, you visited this morning this astronomical bureau, and there is one work um, that uh, um, uh, discusses the um, illustrations. Eh? Uh, it, this was also studied by uh, Nicole Halsberg eh? uh, with the illustrations. And there is an other parallel work eh? with the explanation of it. And if we look at this list, eh? we can see that this is not just a work by Fabist, but by a number of co-authors. Eh? We see Liu Yunde. Uh, we see here uh, Swan Yo Rong, uh, and there you have members of the Pao family. Uh, they all collaborated together. Uh, so it's a network of people who are co authors of the same text. Uh, and then you have Tiao Ping Chen. I come back on him a bit later. Uh, it's important that these are collaborations, and uh, this was a work uh, of the 74, but this was a continuation within the uh, um, within the um, Astronomical Bureau. And so this is a text by um, uh, Charles von Bell, together with other Chinese, and this was edited, or let's say made in 62, so that's 10 years earlier, and you see the same people in blue or in uh, green that I already mentioned. Moreover, you have the names eh, of Li Zubai and a number of other Christians that were there, and who, as a result of the conflict that uh, um, happened uh, at the court eh, and the condemnation of Verbist and of uh, Charles von Bell, who were then pardoned, but there were uh, five um, Christians who were executed eh, according to the uh, Chinese documents that you can find in the Qing Shelu. Qing so uh, Verbist knew all these uh, people as well. I continue. So, so far I have pointed out um, his relationship to 
some of the directors, eh? but he also had contacts with the erudites and with the students. Eh? So he was invited to uh, be the teacher of these students. And as I already mentioned, these were more than 100. Eh? And Verbist also asked to increase the number of students uh, in this uh, department. And here again, you can see how this was a real collaboration. Eh? You see the number of erudites in the work that he published, and you see the number of um, students uh, that Kiam uh, in the same work um, with among them Li Shi, who was the uh, son of Li, Li Zhu Pai, uh, one of the important people who were executed earlier. So uh, this is uh, the sketch that I made now is uh, during the time of Verbist. And so these are publications of the 70s, uh, 1670s, and sometimes a bit later. But we can also see how this whole network and this collaboration continued 20 or 30 years later. And I give an example here. Um, this is a text, a letter that was sent from Peking to Rome in 1702, there was a whole action uh, in favor of the uh, rights uh, controversy, uh, and uh, a number of Chinese Christians sent letters to Rome uh, to make an appeal to the Pope, which was really a very original uh, action. And as you can see here, there is a certain Pao, uh, uh, and if you look at the other text, eh, the, all those who signed the letters, eh, you can see that this letter was uh, compiled by members of the Astronomical Bureau. Eh? So about um, 36 Christians in the Astronomical Bureau, each time with a Christian, uh, a Christian baptismal uh, name, eh, uh, were uh, addressing themselves to the Pope. You see in green the Tiamansheng, the uh, students. You see the um, uh, in red the the erudites, and uh, in yellow these are all members of the Pao uh, family that I already mentioned before. One of them is also uh, the Yuan Ren. Uh, that means he originally had office in the. Um, in the Astronomical Bureau, and this refers to a certain Tiao Paolu, eh? Paulus Tiao. Eh? And who is that? That is the Tiao Pingchen. Tiao Pingchen, who I mentioned before. And Tiao Pingchen is one of the famous painters at the end of the 17th uh, century, and he is known for introducing also the geometrical perspective in his paintings. As you can clearly see here uh, on the design that he made uh, by uh, the arrival of some uh, foreigners with, uh, with an animal. Uh, and in his traditional um, um, uh, paintings, he had this series of paintings uh, on the uh, weaving uh, techniques and uh, uh, local production. Uh, and you can clearly see how you have uh, the um, perspective introduced in it in his uh, paintings. Talking about painters, uh, uh, Verbist also had uh, some contact with Wu Li. Wu Li is also a famous painter uh, who was in Beijing in the time 1670-71, eh, where he got to know uh, Verbist. Uh, and then later on, just like the other person I mentioned, uh, Bla uh, Blas, uh, uh, Verbist, Blas Verbist, in 1682, he entered the Society of, of Jesus and he was ordained together with Blaise Verbist. And he is also a very paint, uh, imp important painter in the uh, late uh, Qing uh, dynasty. Um, 
I give still another example of how uh, these relationships could uh, continue, and that is another of these letters produced in 1702. Uh, and this is not from Beijing, but from uh, uh, Tiangning, that is the Nan uh, Nanjing uh, region. Uh, and this letter is compiled by Liu Ba uh, La Si. Uh, Blaise Liu, eh, who is indeed a uh, Blaise Verbist. Eh? So he brought together a number of scholars. Eh? And you can see here that these scholars uh, carry the name of Xu and Xu, the two family names. Eh? And you can also see that they all have um, uh, Christian uh, baptismal names, and these are all members of the so-called families of Xu Guangxi and Candida Xu. So you can see how uh, about 80 years after uh, the death of Xu Guangxi and of uh, Candida Xu, uh, there were still Christian families in the Nanjing and the uh, 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 um, uh, the north to the north of uh, Shanghai, um, that were Christians, and our uh, Blaise uh, Verbist, who was before at the Astronomical Bureau and who became a local priest for these communities, uh, took care of them uh, around 1702. So this is my short overview of what I wanted to uh, present to you. Eh? So my whole idea was to say, uh, when we talk about Verbist, we should also talk about the persons with whom he was in contact, eh? because he was shaped by these others. Eh? Uh, there is a multiplicity of people with whom he was in contact. Eh? The emperor, the official, the erudites, the students, they can be Han, they can be Manchu. Uh, we do not know so much about the commoners, eh, but they were certainly also there. We can see that the quest often, as in many of the, our relationships, comes from the other. Eh? Um, for instance, the emperor, eh? but also the visitors eh? who come to visit him and who has some questions for, for, for him or who invite him to uh, either make canon or talk about funerals or uh, compile um, books about the astronomical instruments. There is an interaction between them uh, that makes that the interaction produces what is the story and that is reflected in uh, these objects eh, of which they are all co-authors. Eh? It's not often there is the name of a beast, like in many of our works, we have our own name, eh? but in fact, it is the result of a multiplicity of people. And we have seen in the documents that all the names are mentioned. Um, it's, there is also an importance of the networks. It's not only an individual uh, uh, matter, it is a whole network, it's a culture. Uh, the whole astronomical bureau was a relationship between people, eh? and that was not uh, only during the time of Verbist, it started before and it continued 20, 30 years uh, later. So as a kind of conclusion, the other and the network enabled for Beast to become who he became. Eh? And that leads us back to the original um, picture that I showed, where you have all these things coming uh, together. And the only point that I want to add is that there is also kind of in between, between we as historians or we who study or are interested in for Beast today and the objects or the images and the artifacts and the uh, instruments and so that um, uh, are produced by Verbist and the Chinese and Manchu colleagues in the past. And that invite us also to uh, interact uh, between ourselves or with other uh, people. So I thank you for your attention. Uh, as you have seen, um, I mentioned only briefly uh, 
some references, but uh, as I, I hope it was clear enough, that this is um, um, based on the scholarly work of uh, uh, many scholars uh, of whom I mentioned the name, and the full references can be found in our uh, uh, database. Thank you very much for your attention.